baseball and whatever with your host justin mackery because i was on campus and i had to appear like i was one of the cool kids i would put the star wars book inside one of my textbooks so it looked like i was just studying for class <laughs> all right look there's only one return okay and it ain't of the king it's of the jedi vincent francis jankowitz of ford i'm a glorified fact checker last i checked the most runs in a game wins Actually, I am a fact checker. And Greg Probst. If you look at most Bond fans' movie rankings, they have Casino Royale and Majesties in their top two. For me, these actually rank in the bottom part of my list. I mean, I love them, but they don't compare to Diamond Club Forever. Master, no, stop getting Bond wrong! Alrighty guys, hello, Baseball Whatever, episode 82, there's Vinny, I'm Justin, we are back, regularly scheduled episode, no Christmas music, no Christmas movie draft, no nothing, just a died in the wool regular episode. So this week, episode 82, Baseball, we'll talk a little bit about the Cubs, a little bit of White Sox, we might focus a little bit on third baseman ideas for this season coming up for both teams, and then we are going to jump to our whatever topic of best pop songs ever which Vinny and i have talked about we bit off way more than we could chew with this episode oh, yeah. uh initially i figured oh that'll be easy but then you start diving into pop songs and what's a pop song and what's a rock pop song and what's an alternative pop song and a country pop well country i don't listen to but and a rap pop song so it got really really tough so um we'll see how it goes we had a uh, like five or six people i think right in so we'll go we'll talk about that and uh we'll go from there but it is uh, good to be back. If you are listening for the first time, you can reach out to us in a variety of ways. Find us on YouTube.com slash Baseball and Whatever. Tweet us at Baseball and What. Email us, Baseball Whatever at gmail.com. We are all on all your podcast apps of choice. And lastly, Twitch.tv slash Baseball and Whatever. And leave a voicemail or shoot us a text at 1-913-808-3278. That number again is 1-913-808-BART. <laughs> All right, we missed out last week. We didn't get a chance to talk about it. Last week was episode 81, which is our Christmas movie draft. This week is episode 82. So, Vinny, do you want to just focus on 82s, or do you want to do 81s as well? What would you prefer? Um, We can do both. Why, okay. Why the heck not? Yeah. There's not a lot um, in Chicago sports lore for 81s uh, just, with uh, Cubs or Sox or 82s. So okay. we can skip out on both the Cubs and White Sox because – they don't have any, anybody, but okay. we can look at the Bulls who okay. do not have an 81 or 82. <laughs> that makes it easier. Okay. <laughs> and let's see the Hawks. Um, well, we got one 81. Okay. Kind of, kind uh, of the Hawks one. would be Marion Hosa, which is now retired in the Raptors. Yes. Only and player he's the only one to ever, ever wear, wear 81, 81 and will only ever wear 81. I know Erica just bought me his uh, autobiography, so I'm excited to read it this Christmas, this, well, whenever I get around to it. So it's kind of interesting, you know, is that it? he it took that long for him to, to have an 81 and that it, the yeah. one person that wears it is now the only person only to one. wear it. Yeah, yeah. He, um, he talked about how he was number nine, no, 18. He was either number nine or number 18 in Ottawa when he got started and then obviously eventually got 18. here. And 18, thank you. And I believe 18 is retired for Denny Savard, so he switched it to 81 when he came over, and uh, the rest is history, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, yeah, 81, that's the only one I got for the, the Hawks, obviously, and I don't know anybody else. Uh, Bears? Well, I was going to uh, say Marion Hosa was actually wore 81 with the Red Wings before. That's right. So It was 18 he kept with the Penguins. He lost yep. the cup against the Red Wings in that Stanley Cup. Then he went to the Red Wings, lost that Stanley Cup against the Penguins, the Penguins. and then became I a Hawk. I remember that. Yeah. I felt so bad for him. <laughs> and then he became a Hawk. And I know after Taves um, got the Stanley Cup, I believe he immediately gave it to Hosa after that. I so. think so. Uh, yeah, so no, that's, it was exciting to see. I watched his whole, um, retirement thing a couple, couple last month, a couple weeks back, something like that. So, but we do have three eighty twos for the Hawks before we move on to the bears. Okay. Uh, we have Thomas Kopetsky, another 2010 cup run in Did you one say of Kopetsky? Kopetsky. Yeah. Not Kopecky. Okay. So the, the C, CKY is a ski. Yes. He is. I believe he's from 
Czech Republic as well as Hosa. Okay. Um, or no, I'm sorry. Hosa is from Slovakia. I think maybe they're both from Slovakia, not the Czech Republic. I take that back. Um, um, here. Hold on. Let's get it right. Okay. Nope. Well, Marion Hosa is from the Czechoslovakia. Okay. And oh, so that's right. Thomas it was still. Kipetsky. That's right. It was. They were. They were born when it was still Czechoslovakia before it split into two countries. That's right. My mistake. Um, know your history. Come on. I know, and I'm a. I was a history major. Um. All right. Number eighty-two. There is an eighty-two this season. I believe it's Seth Jones' brother, who is not nearly as good as he is. Uh, Caleb Jones, I think his name is. All right. Uh, and I am out of eighty-twos after that. I can't think of any others. Two thousand eighteen. Oh, um, shoot! It was. It had to have been some rookie that didn't catch on with the team. No, nope, wasn't no? a rookie. Really? He played with Edmonton uh, before for about three, four years, twenty fourteen to twenty seventeen. Good lord, who would this have been? Defenseman, shoots Defenseman? left. <laughs> okay, what's From what's Michigan? What's the initials of his name? J O. J O. Well, God, this is not. I have no idea. Jordan Osterley. Oh yeah, he yeah he didn't stick around that long. He was I remember when they got him, it was like ah he's a body. That's pretty much what it was. But uh, all right, man, I, I completely forgot about him. Holy cow! It was oh, only one year. Yeah, it was only one. They weren't they. That was kind of the beginning of the end at that point. So, huh? Interesting. Interesting. All right, eighty ones right. for the Bears. It was like. David Terrell, 81? No, I don't think so. No. I have no idea. Who, not. Who do uh, who you got for me? J.P. Holtz, tight end. Okay, that sounds familiar. Um, Cam- Cameron Meredith. Oh, receiver. yeah, receiver, right? Yep, yep. yep. Okay. S- Sam Hurd. Okay. Another wide receiver. Rashid Davis. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember him. Ahmad Merritt. Okay. Bobby Engram. Mm hmm. Jeff Graham. No. Know, tight end? Maybe. Wide receiver. Oh, I don't remember him at all. I don't either, but he's ranked higher um, for the value um, than Bobby Ingram. But I remember Bobby Ingram, so. Yeah, I remember um, liking Bobby Ingram when I was a kid. I did too. Uh, let's see here. Who else? Man, not a lot. Uh, Doug, Doug Atkins. I feel like we said his name before. We might have. Um, no, we did not. Uh, <laughs> okay. Hall of Famer, Doug Atkins. Oh. Uh, defensive end. Eight-time Pro Bowl, uh, one-time All-Pro, two-time NFL champ, Hall of Fame, all 1960s team. So. Really? Best player to wear, number 81 for the Bears. Okay. Interesting. Very Moving interesting. on to 82. Okay. Um, Isaiah Coulter currently mm. is wearing it, running back. Okay. Ben, or is he a running back or is he a wide receiver? That's a wide receiver number. He is a <laughs> wide receiver. Um, let's see. Ben Brown Becker, Brown Necker. <laughs> Rowan <don't> Gardner. <laughs> I, right? have, uh, I have no he idea. He's a tight end. Um, before that, Logan Paulson, another tight no. end. No, no, I think he was a tight end. Kari Lee, you remember Kari Lee? No, no, he was one year. Um, okay, tight end. I think they got him from. No, the Bears. I think drafted him or got him off waivers or I don't know. I vaguely remember the name. Uh, Chris Williams. Wore oh, 81. was that he? What that wasn't Big Cat Williams, was it? No, that was uh, Chris Williams, the wide receiver. Uh, oh, okay. And I do not <laughs> remember Chris Williams. I do not remember Chris Williams, the wide receiver. Greg Olson wore eighty two. Greg Olson, oh, yes. We eighty two, by the way, not eighty one. So yes, Greg yes. Olson wore eighty two. Um, let's see here. Other than that, Wendell Davis, nineteen eighty eight to nineteen ninety three. Okay. Alan Page. This is uh, a real who's who of people I've never heard of. Right. Earl Thomas. Yeah, um, yeah. Earl Thomas was a smaller receiver, wasn't he? Or am I thinking of Earl Bennett? Maybe I'm thinking of Earl Bennett. Wide receiver, tight end. Eh, it wasn't small. Okay. Six foot three. Oh no, then I'm not. I don't know who I'm thinking of. 
<laughs> Some guy, this I don't is know. Going great. Uh, yeah. Mori Yomas uh, would be the only other notable bear. Mm mm. No. Yeah, nope. he, he didn't do much in the NFL. So, um, yeah, not not a lot of great 82s outside. Probably Greg Olson is probably the best yeah, one. Yeah, it's probably the, the main list. guy, Wend- yeah. Whoever knows Wendell Davis, maybe he's uh, something a special, but that was kind of before my time. Mine, mine too. Mine too. All right. Well, thank you, Vinny. Um, let's see here. Looking at the outline, we do have quite a few people wrote in from our Christmas draft. We can go over people that wrote in with their favorite Christmas movies, and then – uh, if you were listening, thank you to all the people that voted. We had almost 35 people vote in the poll of who had the best Christmas movie draft. So we'll get to that as well. Vinny, would you like me to take this or would you like to read these cut these comments off? I'm um, sure I'll, I'll read them. OK, um, go ahead. Take it away. Brian wrote in. Uh, I'm guessing Brian on Facebook. Yes. OK. Uh, Brian wrote in Christmas Vacation. Yes, that was, I think, a consen- consensus, consensus number, number one, one pick. Yeah. Um, except maybe um, for Kyle. Uh, Kyle might have probably still picked Die Hard. I think um, he would have, yeah. He said that was his number one on his list. Um, yes. But Christmas Vacation for the rest of us was number one. Okay. Pretzel Vince wrote a really long uh, <laughs> list on here. Um, and he didn't pick just five, uh, but he wrote Charlie Brown Christmas, Garfield Christmas, Holiday Inn. What I've never heck? heard of Holiday Inn. That was a Hallmark movie. Oh. Um, Christmas Carol uh, with George C. Scott. Never saw that one. To sleep. <laughs> Honorable mentions: Polar Express, Christmas Vacation. How did Christmas Vacation? Yeah. His list? Oh my goodness. Um, white. Christmas. Well, he's only got he's only got four in his top four too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, Christmas Vacation, White Christmas, The Santa Claus, Die Hard. The original Christmas story took place in the 1940s. We were trying to guess yeah. when that took when place. When that took so, place. 1940s. Uh, okay. And he also said, nice show, gentlemen. So thank you for that. Uh, All right. Uh, we did have a few people write in on Facebook. Melissa said, Die Hard. The answer is always Die Hard, to which my wife said she doesn't understand why anybody gets it or why that is such a big deal. Uh, Erica said, love, actually, Christmas Vacation, Elf, Home Alone, and A Christmas Story. Melissa also said that The Family Stone was pretty good. I have not seen that. Uh, my mom wrote in. She said, Christmas Vacation, Christmas Story, Elf, White Christmas, Charlie Brown Christmas, and Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, and Erica replied to that saying she forgot about Charlie Brown Christmas to which she, uh, in quotes, I'm saying here, not the dull, boring, feel good, true meaning of Christmas one gross, but the funny one with Harold Angel and hockey sticks. It's freaking hilarious. Uh, she's wrong. It's not, but, uh, holiday Inn is a Bing Crosby movie, Vinny. There you go. Pretzel Vince is in the chat. Hello, Pretzel Vince. Um, Hey, we also, everybody, an old man's talking. We also have uh, Cody from CHGO wrote in. He said, Home Alone, Santa Claus, Elf, I'll Be Home for Christmas, and Jingle All the Way. And then um, our guy, um, uh, Jay Khan, wrote in because we were talking to him about coming on. And he had said he was really enjoying Bad Santa. And there was another one. What was the other one? I don't remember what the other one was that he. Oh, do you it remember? Was another kinda, it was kind of like a. I, f- I felt like a. Die Hard ish type. Oh, I mean, Trading hold on. Places. Trading Places, um, yes. I Which I completely one. forgot that's considered kind of a Christmas movie. I think I've only yeah. seen that movie once and I've never seen it all the way through. Have you? I have not. I've only seen bits and pieces of yeah. it. Yeah. I know the, the the two old guys in that also show up in um, Coming to America, which is one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. I have not seen that movie. Oh, that's a, that's a good 80s Eddie Murphy movie. Um, All right. But the most important thing from our Christmas movie draft is. The results from our draft and who had the best, who had the best draft. So, Vinny, are you ready for the winners of who had that? I'm disappointed already. All right. Coming in fourth place, which is also known as last, Vinny with 14.7% of the vote. If you (laughs) remember... (laughs) <laughs> if you forgot what wrong with you people if you forgot what Vinny drafted he was the third overall pick he drafted home alone a christmas story polar express and it's always sunny christmas i would say if you get rid of polar express i think i would pick yours Vinny. that was pr- that's pretty damn good you haven't so. even seen polar express you know might be your number one yeah. pick after it, watching it that could movie. i don't know uh i can't talk though because i only had three percent more with 17.6 percent of the vote i came in third I had the second overall pick. I had Elf, Home Alone 2, Miracle on 34th Street, the original, and a Charlie Brown Christmas. Uh, Jake from Dinger's Podcast 
He had the first overall pick. He came in second, which he was l- pretty damn close to leading it a while. He had 26.5% yep. of the vote. He had Christmas Vacation, Nightmare Before Christmas, The Santa Claus, and Just Friends, which I'll be honest, out of all of his, I think Christmas Vacation might be the only go-to that I will definitely sit down and watch. Santa yeah. Claus is okay. If it's on, I'll leave it on, but I'm going to look to see if there's something else better on. You know, if I I'm like flipping, the Santa Claus. I'm I can't flipping through. Say anything it's good. It's good. That. It's good. I, I'll, I think I'll I, search it out. I will. I think yeah. I watched it at your parents when we were up there for Thanksgiving, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is still pretty good. Um, yeah. And then, Kyle, I love you, man, but I don't know how you pulled this one off. With 41%, almost half of the vote, he came in first place, and he was the fourth pick overall. He came down with Die Hard, the original Grinch. That's what did die it, was Die Hard. Him. Uh, die Hard, Grinch, the original Grinch, Muppet Christmas Carol, and one of my favorites, Jingle All the Way. I was so sad that I wasn't able to get that. I thought for sure nobody would pick that one. So there's the results of your draft. Thank you to everyone who voted. We also have a few comments of people that were writing in. I don't know. Would you like me to read these, or do you want to take go these, ahead. Vinny? All I right. Karen wrote in and said she's going to go with Kyle. While Justin went with classics like Peanut and Miracle on 34th Street, two great choices. He also chose Home Alone 2 and Elf, which decreases his holiday power. Jake had a great lineup until his last choice. Love actually would have made it a winning team. Um, Kyle has the best list. My buddy Greg wrote in, sorry, Greg wins. Sarah wrote in and said, I picked Vinny. Kyle wins. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Oh, yeah, Kyle wins. Sorry. Uh, Lynn wrote in and said, I'd have to go with Kyle. I love three of his movies. And she said, your dad also loves a Christmas story, but it's actually one of her least favorites. Erica voted for you, Vinny. So I guess you got that going for you. Uh, She said, with the exception of Polar Express, Jake also had a solid list. Let's see. And I think that about does it. So there you go. Thank you to all. That was a lot of fun. We might have to try and do something like that again in the future. I don't know what, but... um, We'll definitely try and have those guys on again. They are they are a good time and uh, good guys overall. So, all right. Uh, what do we got next? Real quick, if you would like to check out our partner in the clutch, uh, you can head over to their website. They have awesome sports apparel for licensed MLB, Negro League, and MLS clothing, along with great shirts to rep your favorite retro hockey, baseball, and football teams. Even better, head to intheclutch.com and use promo code baseball and what to get 10% off your order. Once again, head to intheclutch.com, pick out a shirt you like, and at promo code use baseball and what, and you will get 10% off your order. Vinny, are we ready? Should we jump into baseball? Sure. All right. Baseball. Welcome back to Major League Baseball. Sort of. Taking a look at Chicago's two favorite teams and other happenings around the MLB. All right. Well, I guess the big, uh, the big baseball stuff, at least for the Cubs, is we finally got our shortstop. That broke a little bit before um, our last episode when we had the Christmas draft. Dansby Swanson. The Cubs have their shortstop. I, I am very excited. This totally flipped the script for me this off season. They got the shortstop that moves Nico to second to make that a really strong uh, middle infield. Yes, they still need a third baseman because I don't really know if Patrick Wisdom is the answer anymore and Chris Morrell is more of a platoon guy or utility guy. They also need a first baseman because I don't know if Matt Mervis is ready. We'll see. Um, I would love Trey Mancini. They also got their catcher today officially, Tucker Barnhart signed. So you have a battery of Tucker Barnhart and Jan Gomes, which, okay. I mean, I guess they're they're really going defensive. That's the goal this, uh, this offseason. Um, I don't know, Vinny, wh- where's your mentality? Where's your mindset right now with the Cubs? Um, it, I'm excited. The Dansby Swanson, you know, that wasn't my first pick. wasn't my second pick. Um, I'll, I'll, although the drama with Carlos Correa yes. makes my first pick, um, well, second pick meaningless because he's still not signed. No. Um, and so it, it was a good pick. It seems like it was kind of their go-to pick from the get-go. Yeah. Um, especially with uh, Trey Turner signing with Philly so yep. quickly. I don't think – I think they wanted that that good defense, especially with the ship going away. Yep. Um, you know, he was probably one of the better def- defenders um, out there. That His glove carries him more than his bat does. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I know we talked about it before that he, you know, there's parallels to Jason Hayward. Jason Hayward had better offensive stats compared to Dansby Swanson. We'll see how that all plays out. I'll be, you know, I'll be optimistic. I'm not going to be upset. You know, they went out and spent money. Yeah. They got one of the best. I mean, 
people he he was still one of the best four out there yeah regardless of where you had him ranked still one of the top shortstops they still got a top free agent they did what they needed to do yep so i can't be upset about who they got um because they did do something because they might know more than me obviously they probably they should right (laughs) they're getting paid the big bucks for it yeah Yeah, right exactly so i'm okay with that Um, what they're going to do, um, you know, having Nico move to second is going to be great. Um, they got Tucker Barnhart, um, and it was, they, you know, they were going defense. They yeah. weren't going to, oh yeah, like, that was from the get go extending Wilson. They were going defense. That's what they wanted to do. And, right. You know, Wilson's great. Love the guy, but it, it's evident behind the plate. His stats aren't there. There's some glaring errors there. Mm-hmm. Why? The pitching staff ERA jumped as much as it did with him behind the plate compared to Jan Gomes. I don't know why. Um, the Cardinals believe they can fix whatever that issue is. So <laughs> more we'll power see. to them. <laughs> yeah, with first base, um, Trey Mancini's uh, apparently off the market. Um, there's not much left yeah. uh, to go to now. Uh, there was an article out there, um, and you know, on Twitter about. Uh, Patrick Wisdom actually being split for first base, which yeah. could I know we talked about on the show that that could be the option after Abreu didn't sign, um, mm-hmm. that they might just go with Patrick Wisdom. Yeah. Now Patrick Wisdom splits, uh, right left splits, um, it so he would be facing left handed batting, uh, while Mervis is a left handed batter, so he'd be facing left handed pitching. Um, okay. And it splits against lefties is uh. 250 uh batting average uh on base of 336 slugging of 557 and ops of 892 with an ops plus of 143 so that's very good so if that's what they're planning on doing that makes a lot of sense now what are they going to do for third base if they're platooning him there yes uh, you know is he gonna you know I, I i don't know what they can do for third base um the options out there aren't really great you have right. Evan Longoria mm. still sitting out there yeah at 37 years old are they gonna go that route possibly yeah uh Brian Anderson's out there from Miami he didn't really have a good year last year um Matt Duffy's out there mm-hmm. uh he had a good year when he was with the Cubs uh, yeah last year with the Angels he did not have a good year he was a minus one uh, 0.18 war player mm. OPS of 619 uh, on base of 308 but with the Cubs the year before he had a 357 on base percentage an OPS of 738 with a war of 1.64 so he okay. was good with the the Cubs that year um, so yeah you know I, I really don't know what they're going to do there's not that good of options out there so we'll see uh, maybe they just go in-house and it could be you know make it work with what they have um but you know for impact bats that they still need again there's not much out there jd martinez just signed with uh the dodgers so i don't know what they're gonna do to try to get another impact bat uh it i had michael conforto signed with who did he sign with uh was it miami I, for some reason, Miami's sticking out in my Let head. Let me think. But I know Hold they just on signed, here. Uh, uh, he just signed Gene with... Gene Segura, so... Uh, it says the he went to the Giants. Okay, so he's with the Giants. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's not much out there for impact bats. So there's still plenty of offseason. I don't know what inning we're in of the offseason. Oh, right according, now, but, to, uh, according to... Uh, What's his name? Not Judd Hoyer. Crane Kenny? Yes. Yeah. We were in the third. <laughs> we were in the we third. On. I'd say we got to be yeah. at least in the seventh or eighth by now. Yeah. Do we already do the seventh inning stretch with a uh, creepy, uh, creepy hologram? hit <laughs> Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm, I'm OK with the team as it is. It, they could have done, I think, more. Yeah. But, you know, who knows? There's still still time left to do to do something. Um, maybe, maybe Miguel Amaya is supposed to be their impact bat or one of these yeah. young guys coming up uh, are going to, that's what they're planning on being their impact bat. Who knows? Uh, they've, so they've we'll they definitely see. put themselves in contention for the division. I'd say, yeah. and fighting for the division. And they're definitely not the, I wouldn't call them the favorite yet. Yep. Um, but I could, I mean, they'll, they should be competitive. 
it's a weak division to begin with. Um, so, I mean, it, it, yeah. it makes me think there should be exciting baseball come August and September, which is something that has been sorely lacking for a couple of years for the Cubs. Um, but, yeah, I, I think going back with you talking about their third base situation, it makes me wonder with Wisdom, who I, Wisdom's fine. I don't mind him. Um, but you still need someone – I'm excited for Matt Mervis to get a chance, but I'm also afraid they're going to rush him. And if he doesn't come up swinging like he did all through the minors this last season, that he's going to, you know, be thrown back to AAA very quickly. And then if that's yep. the case, you're still you're still down a third base or a first baseman, depending on where you have wisdom. And then what do you do? You still need a DH too, right? I mean, so I, unless I'm assuming is is friend Mil Reyes, they still have him. Maybe he'll be their DH. I don't know. I mean, you haven't yeah. heard anything about him, and I want to say they have him under control for a couple of years now. Still, I, I believe uh, since they got him from Cleveland, one more year, one more year. And I liked what he could do. I could see him being a DH. I'd be okay with that. Uh, I don't know what his splits look like, but um, I was impressed with what he was able to bring to the table for the little bit of time he was with the Cubs. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Maybe that's what they're thinking. I don't know if their pitching is better, which it looks like it could be. Um, and it also depends on what you get from Kyle Hendricks this year. If Even if he doesn't return to form, but even became like a third or fourth starter in the rotation, like that could still be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. The arrow is pointing up for me. Uh, I was very yeah. worried that the Cubs were going to miss out on all four of those big name shortstops. And like we talked about, they would have to rely on the, uh, oh gosh, what's his name? Playing second base. Uh, not magical, but magical. The, uh, yes, magical. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm thinking of, but yeah, they were going to have to rely on him. And even, I know people were losing their mind over him and I don't know. He seems like he could be a good bench guy. I, I don't know yeah. if he could you, stay you, healthy, I, it'd be different. Yeah. You know, and maybe this gives him a chance to get fully healthy and you yeah. know, maybe he can be a trade ship, uh, down the road. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think he, he'll be a good, I think bench off the bat, you know, pinch hitter late in mm -hmm. the game when you need just good contact. I feel like we'll see. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> uh oh Vinny's dying over there um yeah um, I I know what you we'll mean see. though yeah what about what's your take on uh there's all this talk now that Raphael Devers or Devers in Boston Devers. that the Cubs should try and make a run at him because his contract he, he what he wants in Boston Boston most likely won't give him and every day you know he has more leverage than the Red Sox with every passing day um I know there was some some stuff thrown about what they could offer. They would definitely have to give up at least one or two big name prospects, I would imagine, for him. But then you'd also have to work out like some type of extension before he even came over, because otherwise you're only getting him for one more year after that, and that would be a yep. waste. So I don't know. Um, I'm excited though. I'm I'm very excited for spring training, especially now that you know New Year's is a couple days away. But once that's over and it's just the mundane and dreary January and February, like I, let's go. I'm ready for spring training now. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You got any other other cup stuff you want to discuss, or um, no, just on the trade aspect. Yeah. You know, if they can get it done, but we, I mean, Jed hasn't extended anybody no. yet. Nico. Um, so w what? You know, I it's it's a great pipe dream, but until Jed can you know extend either Nico or Ian or Happ, Happ, yeah, which he's already talked about wanting to do. Well, that's a sign. That's a good sign. Ex extended. But, I mean, talking about it's one thing. Getting yes. it done is another. If he can get him extended, then, yeah, trading for Rafael Devers makes sense. It, granted, if. he can get him extended. Yeah. But if you're Rafael Devers, why wouldn't you want to go to it's a free agency to free agency and test the market when you saw how ridiculous it was this past year? So, I don't know. I mean, I think they'll probably stand pat on him. I, it just... I don't think it makes sense, uh, you know, trading for him if he, you can't get him signed. And I don't, I don't have any confidence that they could get him extended. So no, I, I know I was listening to, I, I can't remember if I read on the Athletic, uh, or maybe it was Bleacher Nation. It was, I think it was Bleacher Nation. They were talking about that. Uh, Nico Horner obviously has, you know, one more year, I believe, after this year, and then he's going to be a free agent, I believe. Um, I think that sounds right. I don't know. I, or in terms of just extending him, I don't know how long they hold his rights for. But if you're him, after you saw all these shortstops make bank, wouldn't you take want to go to free agency to see what's out there? I mean, because I don't think the Cubs are going to knock his socks off and give him more 
then he would get it free agency, you know, and then he's I going to be a free agent in 2026. OK, so they have a couple more years of control then. All yeah. right. And then the, the other one with Ian Happ is someone floated the idea that because he's a players union rep for the Cubs, that he will probably go to free agency solely because of yeah. that. And so if that's the case, I get it. I don't begrudge them at all for doing those things. But, man, I would love to see him stay in Chicago. But uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So I mean, they're going to have to pay market value for Ian Happ. They're, yes. He's not going to take a hometown discount no. because he's a player a, rep. Like, yeah. Yeah. That would be the the most ridiculous ridiculous thing for him to do. So yeah, yeah. Let's. I'm. I don't think Hap's gonna sign an extension unless no, Jed overpays. So. But you know, Jed doesn't overpay. Uh, no, <laughs> never, so, never. No. Yeah. Uh-huh. So yeah, we'll see with them. I mean, Nico, you could probably whatever something similar to second baseman Dansby Swanson contract. You yeah. could probably offer that i mean you're gonna have to pay that premium price um i mean i know he only had you know he's only had one fully healthy season which was last year right right so yeah we'll see (laughs) what um i guess we this is a good good as time as any to trans transfer over to the white Sox. um who uh i i don't even know besides andrew benatendi is rick Hahn still alive have they let him out of his cage to talk to people i don't i don't know what they're doing i i did hear that they want uh oh who i can't think of the pros it's not colas is it i can't remember uh white Sox. they're you, they were who are they gonna right field they right were field, gonna o- oscar colas yes so i did read something this week on twitter that they were talking about maybe trying to let oscar colas take that right field spot as a starting spot which i Yes, I don't know, because then I'm assuming Andrew Vaughn is going to move to first base. Is that the plan? Yeah, yeah. So, I think Andrew Vaughn was always going to go to first base once they didn't re-sign Jose Abreu. It just sounds like a lot of White Sox fans are not happy with that idea. Um, you still need a second baseman too, right? If you're the White Sox. Well, they have they have three uh, listed on their depth okay. chart. They got. Lennon Sosa, L- Liori Legend Gar- Garcia, Ugh. and then Rami Gonzalez. That's um, right. And so I, the, I think the talk is that Rami Gonzalez is going to be the starting shortstop. But, I mean, you're going to have two rookies out there. I think Rami Gonzalez is still a rookie. Um, but, yeah, I mean, essentially you're going to have two raw players that don't, haven't had a lot of experience for a team that's in its championship window. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous – that they're going to trot that out there. I mean, if you weren't going to bring back, I mean, Josh Harrison would have been a great depth piece to bring back. You know, it gives you a veteran player just in case these guys, you know, Rami Gonzalez or Len Sosa. Len Sosa was not good. When no. He came up last year. No. Um, I don't know. I don't think Rami Gonzalez did play. Um, I can't remember. Um, but you're banking on a lot. Like the Cubs doing it with Matt Mervis makes sense i mean we talked about patrick wisdom being an option as platoon there right but it makes sense even if they didn't have patrick wisdom or patrick wisdom is going to play third base and they're just going to let matt mervis take it that makes more sense for a team like the cubs than it does because they're not in a championship window exactly and it's just pathetic that this is what they're going to do i mean gene segura was out there he, gene segura is not this you know world beater of a no you know, but he player, had a d- decent he's but decent he's, yeah, he's he's a good he's projected to be a two war player. I th- I think that's good enough. It gives you a veteran depth. I mean, it made sense to sign someone like him because he's an upgrade from Josh Harrison. Yes. If you were going to move on from Josh Harrison, they should have they should have accepted his uh option. Yes. I don't know Josh why Harrison they I still don't know why they didn't. This depth piece. Yeah. It makes no sense in why they didn't do that right now because I mean, it they're really they're really rolling the dice. They're I they're really banking on the change of coaching staff and philosophy is really going to help out everybody else. Um, maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe maybe these players are who they were last year. Yeah. Which wasn't good. Good <laughs> enough, at least. Um, and so we'll see. I, ugh, I don't know. I mean, banking on a guy. I mean, Oscar Colas was, was really good last year in the minors. So, I mean – Doing that, but doing that in two positions for a team yeah. in the championship window makes no sense. No sense. It would None. make sense if it was, oh, you know, 
we were, you know, kind of on the verge at the end, of, kind of like the Cubs were last year. You know, mm-hmm. they were on the verge. The second half of the season was really good. Okay, let's put these players out there and see what happens. But not not for a team in the championship window. It's just that's just it's pathetic. It's baffling. And I know I feel like we're broken records. Like I feel so bad for White Sox fans. And I mean, no ill will, even though I'm a Cubs fan. But I, it's so hard to watch a team that I mean, prior to last season, if you take last season out, like they were right there. Like like this was this was it. You know, I still remember mm-hmm. the tweet from. Was it NBC Sports Chicago of, you know, them showing uh, Will Smith from yeah. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air saying, oh, where is that? Where's the rest of the division? Are they going to show up? And they're like, oh, my God, it just they fell apart. And I think Tony the Russo had something to do with that. Um, also, you have a lot of players. I don't want to say underachieving, but maybe regressing to their mean underachieving, maybe regressing, but like uh, perfect example. We talked a little bit as of the, of the Cubs third baseman. And then you take a look at Yuan Mankata, who he's, his value has to be at an all time low, right? Like yep. he had a horrible year and I still can't figure out a, which Yuan Mankata is the true Yuan Mankata and B, which one are you going to get this season? Like, are you going to get yep. the better one because Tony's gone or are you getting the one that, you know, near the end of the season seem like not attitude problems. Cause I feel like that that's sometimes overstated and overblown, but like, wasn't necessarily hustling on all plays or maybe was playing hurt and didn't want to tell people. But, um, I don't know. What, how do you think he'll do this here? I don't know. It's a tough one. I mean, it, I don't know how a lot of these guys are going to do. Yeah. Like you said, I mean, they had a lot of injuries, right? Mm-hmm. Like Aloy being hurt. I, can he be healthy for a full season? You know, I saw uh, no. Say, oh, he's going to hit 40 home runs this year. Is he going to even be able to play in 40 straight games? Not from the be bench. Yeah. to be in 40 straight <laughs> games. I mean, good Lord, he can't stay on the field. You own know, Luis Ro- Robert, the same thing. Yeah. He, I mean, he can't stay healthy for a full season. And, and I know guys get dinged up, but, I mean, man, all these soft tissue injuries that yep. a lot of these guys are getting. I know Aloy's is more – freaky accident yeah. so maybe he can but maybe he just has that weird injury bug that some players have right it just happens sometimes I, I don't know what's going to happen with andrew vaughn playing first base um hopefully i mean it's going to be better than him being out in the outfield um has to be so uh, we'll see is yasmani grandal going to come up to be better than what he was i don't think he's going to be his 2021 version right because that was like a career outlier but i don't think he's going to be as bad behind the you know batting i should say offensively as he was last year i i sure hope not or they're screwed um <laughs> because you know they they need him to be in in that near range of the 2021 i, I obviously uh, yeah, they can't have him be as bad as he was last year. They can't have that. Um, it, and I don't know what they're going to do with, you know, they got, what, Carlos Perez, Zebby yeah. Zavala, and yeah. Yasmani Grandal behind the plate. Not, doesn't really. No, it doesn't. It doesn't rain or doesn't, like, provide a lot of confidence there. And, you know, it's funny. Like, if you would have told me, God, uh, was it 2017 was the Quintana trade when they gave up Eloy and Dylan Cease? Like, I remember being so bummed out about Eloy being traded to the Sox. Dylan Cease, I was not sure how that would pan out. But holy Mm -hmm. cow, Dylan Cease is definitely the gem of that trade now. Eloy, I'm not even really too shook up about that just because his talent level is there. But like you said, he's injury prone or freak injury you know yeah. adjacent and that's what keeps happening so um yeah i don't know for white Sox fans i don't know what to tell you i i feel like i know if, if greg was here he'd be saying that the window has slammed shut and they're done i don't know i i did see that a bunch of white Sox fans raised i think five grand to put up two billboards outside uh u.s or u.s cellular guaranteed rate field saying uh sell the team jerry but oh gosh. that's not going to do any money. And it is. You know what I mean? It, it's like that money could have went to a charity or something instead because right? that billboard is. I mean, I get you're trying to voice your frustration. Don't worry, Justin, J- Jerry will take care of the charities. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, he, that's, baseball. that's why he got into baseball to take care of charity. Um, yeah, I don't. I oh, I man. always I, find it silly that when the fans do that, like, I mean, it's funny, but. It's silly. It's a waste of money. It is. It You know, it's just like there's uh, – I mean, I guess I can't begrudge anybody. They can do what they want with their money. But it's like, do you really 
are you doing it more is just because you're frustrated or are you doing it because you think that's going to do something? Because if it's yeah. the latter, that's a bigger problem, because let's be realistic. If if Jerry doesn't listen to Rick Hahn, he sure as hell isn't going to listen to a bunch of fans right. that got a billboard. So and, and let's, know. let's be honest, I'm sure Jerry probably has some ownership interest in that billboard in that billboard. Too. Yeah, <laughs> so he, they're paying him the, the fee. So to the fee, the fee right for the him. billboard. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. So I don't know. Um, you got any other baseball talk? Anything else you want to discuss? Uh, I, I don't. The, know. the only the only other thing I was going to say is we're still waiting on Carlos Correa. Obviously, Steve Cohen, you know, went out on Twitter saying we got him. He's ours. You know, when the contract was announced and then obviously there's something in his physical that same things that the San Francisco San Francisco Giants caught as well. Something apparently with there's reports that he had a plate put in his shin uh, cause okay. he broke, he broke his shin in college. Uh, he had a, a metal plate in inserted there and apparently the plate has shifted a little bit since when it was put in. Um, and that's, what's causing concern. Now, again, how much of that is true? I don't know. I don't know how I'd be very afraid to leak that if I was someone with the team because yeah. of hi- HIPAA violations and things like that. Um, but that's, that's the rumor that I've heard. Um, so I don't think Cohen lets him get away, but I also have I'm curious because it sounds like Correa does not want to renegotiate the contract. Yeah. And that could be a problem because the Mets are not, that's the thing is if you're giving him 13 years and if after seven years, his shin is completely shot 12 years, 12, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. So I, I mean, the smart thing would be for them to say, okay, well we'll give you like seven years and more than Dansby Swanson or, or we'll do like, eight years, but you have an opt out after two an opt out after four or a mutual opt out, whatever. But it sounds like, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know Car- Carlos Correa at all, but like, it sounds like from what I gather in, in listening to sports radio and reading online, it's like, no, this is what you told me you were giving me. I want this contract. And yeah, the Mets are like, no, I don't think so. So I don't know. I, I don't know where he goes. If he goes somewhere else after that, I don't know what happens, but it'll be interesting. Yeah. I mean, if you're him, I don't think you would want to. I mean, your value is declining each time oh, you're every getting time rejected you, yeah. on these physicals. <laughs> like it's it's not good. So no. yeah, you would be fighting like you know for everything if you were. They're like, no, we're, we want to renegotiate. Be like, nope, I we agree. I want that. my money. That's what we're yeah. doing. Like I'm not because I don't want to go back out there now. No, you're, the, you're rejected by two teams. Right. The, the third team is going to be paying way, way less. less. Your market value has dropped. He'd and way less, less years. Prob- I'm curious if he'd be now less, if his uh, AAV would be less than Dansby Swanson's if he had that's to go a back good, out and look that's for That's a good point. Team. If Yeah. Well, and it makes me wonder when he signed with Minnesota, obviously this had to have come up in the Minnesota physical, but maybe they and, were unless, thinking – if it, you're talking about the sh- the, the shin thing, it, yeah. Know, if, if that's true at all, if you're talking about shifting, maybe it shifted during the season. It that was could be fine last that could be. year, and now and now this came up because it shifted. I you know if that's yeah LLC, if that if, would make if that's sense. the thing, or or they knew that was the case and they're like, well, it, they didn't offer him a long term contract anyway, you know, because of the opt outs. So like, who cares? I I don't know. I know yeah. uh, our our buddy Cody Del Mendo over at CHGO he retweeted a TikTok. Uh, I never thought I'd be using TikTok as a source of information, but it was somebody who was a orthopedic, I'm sorry, not orthopedic, an athletic trainer. And I think he specialized on the lower body or legs and stuff like that. But he had pulled up numerous photos of when Carlos Correa was turning double plays or throwing to first base. And the way his legs were angled, you could tell he was trying to get all of his power just from turning his hips and throwing with his arm, as opposed to like generating some force from his legs in his positioning. Interesting. And so they think that, I think that's where this whole shin thing is coming around. And, and also, you know, people know he broke his shin in college, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, but like you said, Vinny, if he doesn't get, you know, locked in with the Mets, I don't know. I mean, there's going to be teams lined up. I know like I, if the Cubs said, hey, if you want to come play here for three years, we'll put you at third and you can have an opt out after one and two years and we'll give you like thirty five million. I think I would still jump at that if I were the Cubs. I don't yeah. think he would because I think he's going to be tired of doing this mercenary thing where he opts out every year. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. But yeah. I, yeah. It, it's it's a wild story. I don't yeah. think I've seen anything like this. 
No. Um, in professional sports in my lifetime where players being rejected because of physicals and bouncing around and this high profile yes. of a free agent as well. Well, yeah, and I feel like the physical usually is such an afterthought, right? Like, yep, it's just yeah, a, it's, yeah. it's just a given. The physical, you know? it's like, oh yeah, they'll they'll pass it. It'll be fine. Whatever. There's, I'm, they're, they didn't have like a season end. They weren't on IR at the end of right. the season, which makes this even weirder, weirder because he wasn't on IR at the end of the season. Right. He didn't have a season ending injury or anything, you know, major like that. The the only other time I feel like I've heard of this happening is when the Bears tried to sign that one lineman this year. Was he from Pittsburgh? I don't remember who that lineman was. Yeah, that's right. Yep. And then all of a sudden he went, didn't pass his physical, and I, I know he signed somewhere else. I know he was yeah. playing this season, but uh, it's it's a weird story. So we'll uh, if you're coming to us for all your baseball news, we will have more as as it updates. Um. All right. I guess we're done with uh, sports talk. Are we ready for whatever? You don't have any Hawks talk. Uh. Would you like me to talk about the one win they've had in like 22 games? I'm. I I think I'm. <laughs> You're good? I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Keep it going. <laughs> now it's time for whatever. 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 Whatever you want. Whatever I want. Whatever, dude. Irrelevant. Whatever, dude. Yes. No, there's there's no point to talk about the Blackhawks. And I don't know if you watched, well, I don't know if you watched the Bulls, but Grayson Allen, man, that guy's a tool. I yes. do not like him. Uh, he he shot forearm shivered somebody yesterday. Anyway, all right, whatever. Vinny, take it away. Welcome to whatever baseball, whatever. This week we are counting down or count, ranking our yes, top five uh, pop songs of all time, which was <laughs> the most ridiculous thing we could have. Who endeavored. came up with this idea? What an uh, idiot. Justin. <laughs> uh, uh, I had a better one. Uh, yes. Maybe we'll do in the well, future. Well, that next but, week, yeah. Uh, I digress. Um, this was, yeah. I, Justin, I don't know about you. I started looking at, like, the Billboard's Top yes. 100 number one song or top 100 pop songs of all time. And as I was scrolling through the list, I saw, like, uh, New Radicals, you, you Get What yes. You Give. Yes, and I never Third think of blind, that as a pop song. Kind of life. Yeah, and like you said, I, I don't consider those pop songs. When I think pop songs, I think boy, you know, Backstreet Boys, Boys yes. to Men. Boys to Men is more R&B, but, yeah. you know, 98 Degrees, you know, Britney Spears, Madonna, stuff like that. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't consider... You know, anything with, you know, guitar playing, you know, or, you know, rap music. I think I saw Blackstreet's um, no, no Diggity. Diggity on there. And I was like, <laughs> that's a really good song. I don't consider that a pop song. I no. consider that R&B rap. Right. Um, yeah. So I, uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, Zach Richardson, Dr. Dr. Mantis Tabakin in the chat uh, uh -oh. put in. Uh, he got into an argument with his pizza delivery man about what uh, constitutes, constitutes a, a pop, pop song. Soup. Yes. I, you know, that's great. I hope he got his right pizza this time. Uh, pepperoni and not a big sausage one. Uh, but yes, it, pop songs are incredibly hard to do. So, Justin, I cheated this week, I guess you can so to uh, uh -oh. say. Okay. Yeah, I know. Shame on me. Right? Shame on um, you. That's something I would you, do. But what I did was I went through the last four five decades so okay. from 2010 all the way to the 1970s and pick the song that was on the that was on the pop charts the longest for that decade so oh, the, the, the okay. longest weeks um and i ranked those five songs okay to get you know my rankings so i kind of cheated because i didn't actually try to figure out songs that's all right i like that's, yeah i just did it by based on what other people liked um okay yeah, and it was i like that I only liked – well, I liked three of them. There was a tie in uh, – what was it? Um, 2000? The 2000s, there was a tie for two songs being at uh, 14 weeks. Oh. Um, the one I did not pick was Mariah Carey's We Belong Together. It was on for 14 weeks okay. in 2005. So I did not pick that one, so that's technically an honorable mention for me. Um, <laughs> but, this, this, yeah, so – Justin, I'm going to kick it to you and hear what okay. your I uh, Okay, five. so, yes, Vinny, uh, much like you, I was going through, like, the Billboard top songs of each decade and stuff like that, uh, and I scrolled through my 
what is it? it technically hold on what's it called now technically it's called apple music it's not called itunes anymore i scrolled through all my music there um and a lot of the stuff i considered pop was also considered rock same thing with some rap um i know like one list had eminem is pop music and i'm like okay that is so wrong he didn't make the pop charts yeah he did oh. and i just i don't i don't see that so I specifically, like you, tried to steer clear of anything that was more rocky or rockish or rock and rock and or roll, I guess you could say. Uh, but my number five, so these are all songs that I like. Um, and if I hear them on the radio, I will let them play all the way through. And I believe all five of these are considered pop songs. You're going to learn a little bit about me today, I think. Uh -oh. um, my no Well, I'll get to that. All right. My number five, <laughs> the only boy band song I like. It is my favorite boy band song. I love the music video for this song. I know your sister loves this song. And that is Backstreet's Back by the Backstreet Boys. Okay. That is Good song. That is a jam. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the music video. They're all dressed up no. like but Oh, oh, Vinny, you are in for a treat if you YouTube it later. <laughs> let me let me paint you a picture. They're on their tour bus in the late nineties, and their tour bus breaks down, and it breaks down literally in front of this old creepy mansion. It's perfect. They, they, okay. they go in. The bus driver says, let me fix the I'll fix the bus. You guys go stay at this creepy mansion for the night. Somehow they each turn into like one turns into the mummy. One turns into like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Another one turns into a vampire and a fish man. And a, did I say vampire? I don't know. A bunch of different stuff. And they literally just have like a giant dance party with a bunch of creepy people. So great song. Oh. Great music video. I still remember listening to this. I God, I think I would have been like fourth or fifth grade when this song came out. So, or yeah, something like that. Um, best Backstreet Boys song, best boy band song in in general, in my opinion. So there you go. Okay, interesting. I'm yes. not shocked at all that. I, I'm guessing for all of these, you know the music videos for them. <laughs> yes, I do. Actually, yeah. no. Yeah. Uh, for two of them, I don't. Oh, that's that's, that's a surprising. Surprise. Yeah. Um, so okay, that's a good song. I I like that. I can I can get behind that one. All right. Well, um, thank you. <laughs> for me, number five. This song was from the 2010s. Oh. It was on uh, number one for 19 weeks, which was the longest in history. Uh, number one. This is number five for me because this song was so terrible. Oh. Um, the songs four through three were bad. I didn't like any of them oh really okay but because this one was a number one for 19 weeks i i pulled a uh principal skinner where i'm like is it the is it me, <laughs> is it that's, me that's the problem no it's the children <laughs> the children are the one the kids don't know what the hell is good music anymore but this song is old town road oh by little i hate that little, song god i'm so old little nas little. little nas x <laughs> featuring billy ray cyrus. i think that's what makes billy it worse ray freaking cyrus yeah being on number one for 19 weeks the guy that came out with achy breaky heart, hearts he the is mullet. not talented whatsoever not at all in the music world How riding his daughter's coattails number one for 19 weeks is beyond me this is why this song the the numbers five through three for me were all equally bad i did not like any of them but the fact that this was number one for 19 That's weeks. That's a long time. Th it almost doubled numbers four and five on their time it's uh, just, at number one. It's not It's not a good song. No, it's not. I don't I don't get it at all. I like, don't why understand. Why like that song? No. I, and no, I, I don't understand how Billy Ray Cyrus got picked. I mean, you could have picked anybody else to do that part of that song. Yeah, I, I I highly doubt he collaborated on that song. Um, I I, I don't know. I don't. Know. He's just, just and he seems like song. a weird dude to begin with. And since Achy Breaky Heart, oh god, that song is hor that might be at, like at least we got Achy Achy Breaky what farts? Is that the, yes, the song did. from Weird Al? Yeah, I we got we that did. out of it. That's so true. um, there, yeah, we'll so, always have that. Yes. All but right. yeah, I can't I can't believe it when I was going through the list and I saw that was on there and I had to pick that song. I'm like, this song's going to be this song's going to be last. But then two other songs were oh Even God, worse. Just equally as bad. Oh, I'm but excited. I'm like, I'm, the there's a good chance. 19 weeks. It almost doubled the other two songs uh, like on their time on number one. Yeah, I don't was, know. What's, yeah, it was terrible. What is what is wrong with children these days? Uh, yeah. Oh, God, that's such a bad. Yeah, not a good song. No. I don't like it. I don't like it. Nope. So, all right. Uh, my turn. 
Justin, number four. All right. My number four, um, I don't really like any of – trying to think no i don't there's not really any other music by this singer that i like i don't really like any music by her family she's got a very famous family very famous brother uh and that is janet jackson in the song escapade i really like that song Oh, that's a good song it is a good song i don't know the music video for that song Vinny. oh shocking Uh, i know i know but uh yeah that that's another song another pop song if it's i'm sure i have it on my ipod still and if it comes on you know one of the oldies one of the oldie stations that's depressing uh when it comes on one of those i will be like oh turn it up we're gonna rock out and listen to this song because it's just got a it's got a really good beat um and like i said i am not a janet jackson fan at all she's got some good hits does she i could probably name one or two other songs um yeah Yeah. not off the top of my head but um that that one is one that i really really like and it's uh i want to say that was very early 90s i believe i think it was very early yeah i think so i think you're Um, right but yeah, uh, that song is awesome. I just like the beat, and uh, it's got some good drum parts to it. So there you go. Nice, good number yeah. four. Yeah, I uh, think so. Number four for me. This song came from the nineteen seventies. It oh, was God. number one for ten weeks, not nineteen. Ten weeks. Ten weeks. Uh, sung by Debbie Boone, but this is "You Light Up My Life." Ugh. Ten weeks, number no, one. That's a horrible. Is, well, that is a horrible song in 1970s. too. Seventies. Oh well, there, there there's a lot of a lot of a lot of drug use. No, 60s was drug use, right? I guess 70s yeah, too. But, but I mean, still, disco. The, yeah, the Beatles was were still coming out with stuff yeah. in the 70s, right? No, oh, yeah, yeah, late 70s. Or I'm sorry, early yeah. 70s, early 70s. Ten weeks. Can you imagine listening to that song? It was uh, 1977 was the year it came out. Ten weeks in 1977, you were listening to that song probably maybe twice a day on the radio. I was going to say, you only had terrestrial radio. You didn't have streaming and XM and Sirius. You were forced to listen to this song on the radio probably twice a day. Yeah. Oh, at least. Oh, at least. Oh, stuck in traffic listening to you are the light of my life. Oh, get out of here. That would, that would condone more road rage. If I heard that while I'm stuck in traffic. No, it can condone me driving off a cliff. Oh, (laughs) God, you gross. light up my life. I'm gonna light you up. <laughs> You're gonna light up my life, all right. <laughs> right off a cliff. Right. Oh, uh, right in oncoming traffic. Yeah. Oh, Not. Oh man. God, man. Um. Yeah. I mean, the '70s are a pretty bad decade for music in terms of the way disco took over. But I mean, there are some '70s songs or '70s artists that I like. That is yeah. definitely not one of them. That is not no. a good song. I, I was shocked when I saw that. I mean, 1977 must have been a terrible year for music. It must have. It and that's well. the, the number one. It, ten weeks. Ten that weeks. That's two and a half the, months. That decade. That's almost. What? No, wait. The ten weeks is, yeah, almost, over two and a half months. Two and a half months, yeah. roughly. So, wow. That is not good. That's really bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'll be curious. There's one song in particular. I'll be curious if it, if it ends up on the list you research because I remember okay. hating this song. Um, I, I liked it was, at first, then I hated it. So there was a uh, yeah. I don't think any of these songs I expected to be there's to be on there. I don't know about you, and and maybe I mean this would be maybe for this song too. But like, there's a threshold too, especially when you listen to regular old radio. And you hear a song and you like it, and then it just gets played to death. And then after a mm-hmm. while, like, there's plenty of songs I started loving, and then I, after hearing it too much, I'm like, I don't, I hate this song. I don't want to listen to it anymore. And then it takes yep. years for it to finally be like, oh, that was such a good song, but God, was that overplayed? Like, yep. um, do you remember Blurred Lines by Robin Thicke? Yes, I li- I like that song again now. But there was a period of time it was popular when when Eric and I got married that it was like on the cusp of like you they're playing it way too much yep. like oh yeah it was, it was uh number one for nine weeks really if i remember correctly wow. yeah it okay we're on there nine to nine nine to twelve weeks or something Holy like that yeah, it, was, it was up there good to know good to yep. know all right what are we at me number three number three all right here's another one i think this oh pretzel vince in the chat says you light up my life won an oscar for best song <laughs> how <laughs> I it don't know. Been, obviously, it must have been in a movie, but good night. We'll have to we'll have to Gross. look up and see who the uh, competitors were for that Oscars uh, year. Um, all right, my third one, another one you probably wouldn't expect me to like, but this song is a jam. Uh, I also not really a fan of this singer besides this song. I know your sister said she likes this singer. 
And that is Straight Up by Paula Abdul. Nice. Okay. I really, that's a really catchy song. That is a very good song. It's got some like 80s synth. I'm assuming it's late 80s, maybe early 90s. I don't know. I think it's, uh, I want to say it's late 80s, but um, yeah, that's a great song. Thank you. Great song. Yes, 1988. I was a year and a half. Uh, or Yeah, a year and a half. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I, I love that song. Um, it's just got a, I don't know. There's something about like, I, the mute, the lyrics are fine, whatever, but like the background, the music, the beat, you know, that, that's what I'm into. So, uh, if that's what, that's the kind of music I constitute as a pop song, that's definitely in my wheelhouse. So there you go. It is not a, you light up my life by no means. So I apologize no, for that. You know, couldn't, couldn't hold that number. Couldn't one hold a candle long. to that one. Hey, no. Um, Okay. <laughs> For me, number three came from the 1980s. This is Ooh. not another good song, but it only made number three. It was my, I guess, least hate hated song <laughs> okay. because it was featured in The Office. Um, Michael did a rendition of this song. I don't know if you can think of where, where I'm going. Um, oh. But it was sung by Olivia Newton-John in yes. 1981. Something was in the... Om- no. On the number one pop chart for 10 weeks again, Ooh. and this song is physical. Oh, I hate that song. This song's terrible again. Horrible. What the hell is wrong yes. with people? Great, great scene in the office when Holly and yes. him are giving the, the uh, what is it, the, not weight management, like the exercise. Yeah, the actually, how to be, yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah. Terrible song. A great funny for the office. office and that's yes. why it is number three because all of those songs were terrible. I'm like this was number one physical for ten I remember ten weeks ago. That song was on you remember pop up video? Did you ever watch pop up video when you were yes. a kid? That was on pop up video and every once in a while when I'm running on the treadmill, I'll put old episodes of pop up video on just because I have nothing to watch. And uh on YouTube and that popped up and that music video is horrible. It's just her in like exercise clothes working out with a bunch of old fat men. And that's Gross. the whole video. And I'm like, Ugh, no, I've, and I don't like the song at all. I don't know how that was popular. I, I, I don't know. I Do mean, you, it's it's definitely an 80s song. So it's yeah, probably during the, like that workout video type of. Fan, yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I just I don't. Yeah, that's not a good song. At all. Yeah. Nope. Not a good song. I so. will take the other two over this one. Um, yeah. Ugh, not good. Yeah, but, I mean, Old Town Road, uh, 19 weeks. I'm sorry. No, that, that Old song Town is just Road equally is, as that's bad. bad. Oh, they're all was, bad. Yeah. They're well, all bad. So. Oh, my God. Yes. Moving on to yes, hopefully something, something good. More yes. Pleasing. Number two, Justin, for you. Number two, this is a song... Um, First album I think I ever bought when my parents got a CD player in 1994. So we're going a little early again. And that is Don't Turn Around by Ace of Bass. Nice. I love that. I think I know four songs by them in total. You're and a they big are Ace all... of Bass fan, right? I was. Well, those four songs. I know right? <laughs> Don't Turn Around, All That She Wants, The Sign, and Cruel Summer, I think. That's okay. it. Those are the only four I know. I know they've had multiple albums, but yeah, there you go. Nice. And then I heard. Then I heard one of the teachers I used to work with. I remember him telling me he heard a. Uh, it was either like an urban legend or a myth, or maybe it was true. I don't know. That band was consisted of two, it was two girls and two guys, and I want to say they were like from Sweden, maybe, or somewhere in like the the Baltics. Not I'm sorry, not Baltics. Yeah, no. No, that's yeah. not the ball. Is that the Baltics? Yeah, I should. Man, I'm. Lo- I need to go back to work. I'm no, losing it. I, I don't know now. I'm not the nerd. Up, up, in, up in Norway, Sweden, Finland, up there. Um, and he said he had heard a rumor that the two guys were like white supremacists, and I'm like, oh, oh, that's. I, I don't like that, but I'm like the song. The song is still right? good. I don't know. Yeah. So interesting. Uh, I love that that first album. I don't know any of their other music besides that, but uh, yeah, I used to listen to that a lot when I was a kid, running around dancing to their songs. So. Great pop nice. song, great pop band. There you go. Ace of Bass, don't turn around. Good job. Thank good you. Pick. Thank Another you. Another good one. Better than my any of the songs on my list, but obviously not that popular. Um, <laughs> not popular enough, no. No. Um, this one, now the songs get better. 
Okay, um, good. That's a, obviously that's a good thing. we belong together. That one that was an honorable mention would be better than the other three I had just mentioned. Agreed. That third on my list. Agreed. Um, but this one comes from. Let's see here. Where is my list? In 1990s. Obviously, okay. now we're starting getting to good music. 1990s. Yes. This song was uh, number one for 16 weeks. Oh. In 1995, okay. with Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> Mariah Carey featuring Boys to Men and it is One Sweet Day. Oh this song? yeah, I remember that song. Yeah. Very good song. Um I, I this is song the first this was the first one I found and I listened to it. I'm like, all right, this is actually gonna be kind of hard if they're all this good. If they're all, yeah. And then it went Boy, were you mistaken, yeah. Quickly went yeah. downhill from there. Um but no, that was it's a very good song. Good R it's more R and B. Um, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a very good song. Um nice melody, um good lyrics. I yeah. I really enjoyed listening to it. So this is was this was the one the well, I guess two time, two three times that they got it right with uh the songs, but obviously it came during the 90s when music, I mean, you could pick any song from the 90s and be better than the oh. other those other, other decades I had just mentioned. Yes, um, yes. So, yeah, it was a good song. Um, so that, number two for me. I feel like, and, and I don't know, maybe you don't remember this because I know you're a little bit younger than me, but, like, there was a period of time where I feel like you couldn't go anywhere without hearing Boys to Men on the radio. Yep. Like, they were everywhere, you know, and then the episode of It's Always Sunny where they're practicing for Motown, Phil, Mo, Motown, uh, Oh, what the is Alcapello. this? Yes, yes. They're practicing That's with that. That's a quarantine that. episode. Yes, and they got all the outfits on, and Charlie's confused, thinking they're all going to have to wear one outfit together. Yep. Uh, <laughs> like a like a Megazord kind of thing, like a right. Power Ranger thing. Um, no, that is a good song. I remember that was their album, the the album that was popular in the '90s. I don't know which album it was, but like that was when you had the like Sony BMG, like buy five CDs for a nickel or whatever, mm-hmm. and you. That was definitely one that we got along with a bunch. That's like where nice. all our CDs came from was from those things. But uh, yeah, good. That that is impressive that that's at least on there. That that was that's a decent song. So yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah, so. That was yeah. That was the the longest uh, running one until Old Town Road knocked it off. But yeah, wow. sixteen weeks at number one. I can't believe Old Town Road beat that. <sighs> that's depressing. Beyond me. Ugh. Yuck. All right, so my number one, um, this one is still, I would consider pop, but it definitely skews a little bit more towards the rockish side of things. It's the only one, but it is, it is legit like one of my favorite songs of all time, so that's why it had to be number one, and that is All I Want to Do by Sheryl Crow. Okay. Do you consider song. that pop, or is that, I mean, it does have a rock. I know it's got an acoustic guitar in it, I, but... I'm sh- I'm sure it made the pop chart so yeah. it qualifies, Justin. So Thank you, Vinny. I appreciate it. This is the one time I'll let it slide. You'll let it slide. This was Such so a bad topic. Yes. The, yeah, the type of pop things, uh, songs they that were are co- considered pop. Yeah, songs, I never so. knew that there was it was such a wide net. But no, I love that song. Um, yeah, I, I think we've talked about this on other music episodes, but like that era of Sheryl Crow stuff, like the early 90s to like the mid 90s, I love, like, she's got awesome music. Yeah. And then, you know, once she hits, like, Soak Up the Sun with, like, and she did a song with Kid Rock or whatever, and I'm like, yeah, this music sucks. I, it got really poppy then. Um, Both those songs were good. I mean, they're okay. But when when I'm – this is kind of like um, – like, I liked some Jewel music, too, like, when she was more the folksy, you know, acoustic guitar. Yeah. And then in, like, 2001, 2002, she did that, like, pop album where, like, she was trying to be something totally else, and that totally turned me off of, like, all – jewel music after that cheryl crow going from like this like cool indie rockish pop singer to now she's doing like i don't know duets with kid rock and they're all like sweet i'm like oh i don't this isn't the cheryl crow i know you know but as long as not that sweet no i know but it's not as good as what her old stuff was i guess is yeah. what i'm trying to I say mean, but everybody evolves and tries yes. to grow I didn't yes. think it was bad what, no, what she ended up pivoting to. It's fine. I honestly don't know what she's up to. I know she still performs, but I don't know if she writes music anymore. But um, that is my she number one. She did the one. Cars theme song. Did she? Oh, that's right. I remember you telling me about that. I yeah. did not. That's right. And that one's good. There you go. She still got it. Yep. She still got it. So Although uh, Cars came out in like, what, 2000? <laughs> Oh, the 2000s. oh, time is going too fast. This sucks. Yes, it is. Oh. Yes, it is. All right. What do you got for? Oh, can I take a guess what your number one is? Because I think I know. What year is it from? Can you at least tell me it's, that? 
Yep, from the 2000s. Okay, then I, it is not what I thought it was going to be. Never mind. What did you I, think it was going to be? I thought it was going to be Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On, the Titanic song. That was the 90s. I already did the 90s, yes, Justin. Yes, I know. That's why it, before you said 2000s, that's what I thought it yeah. was going to be. So, But I'm surprised that one. That, I remember that one being Oh, my radio. God. I remember I, that song on like MTV and VH1. It was on nonstop. It was so oh, it was annoying. A big movie. It was. Not a good movie, but. No. No. A lot of people liked it. Yeah, but, they did. But again, as we're finding out, a lot of people like bad things. <laughs> yes, so. that's true. Yes, yes, you're right. Um, but no, All this right. one was and came out in 2009. It was number one for 14 weeks. It's by the Black Eyed Peas. It is I Got a Feeling. Oh, God. It's a good song. Um, it is. It is. A, it, it just reminds me, it just, you know, I don't know. It's a good party song. Yes, I, I remember my my mom when we did our wedding and we were asking everyone what they wanted to like walk out and be introduced to. Yeah. That was the song she wanted to be introduced to and we my sister and I still give her shit because in the wedding video she's like she's like pumping her fist like she's like one of the uh one of the guys from Jersey, Jersey Shore. People. Yeah. And it's like what are you doing? So, it's a good yeah. Song. I mean, we still it, give her crap for that. Yeah, and that song was played a ton when yes, I was it in was. college, obviously, at parties and stuff yep. like that. So that's what I always attribute to is yes. those fun times. So yeah, of course. It's it's a good song. Um, yeah, I, one song I really was hoping to, ha- to be on there, and it actually wasn't, was Uptown Funk. I oh, really yeah, I'm surprised. Song. That's a really good song. That's yeah, a really it, good it song. It missed it by a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, uh, com- I forgot who it would have been. Well, yeah, it missed. I think it came out in the 2010. So okay. yeah, it it did not make 19 weeks, but I'm sure wow. it was probably up there with some other ones. So, um, hmm. yeah, that, that's one of my favorite pop songs. Very nice. You got any any other pop songs just in general that you want to shout out? Um, the only other one that when we said pop songs, Uptown Funk was the first one that popped in my head because I love that song. And then the other song that I really like is Sugar Sugar by the Archies. Oh, gosh, that's going back. I love that song, too. That's, like, right up there. So those first two songs popped in my head when we were talking pop songs. That's that's um, that's like a definition, quintessential pop song right there. Yes. Very yeah. nice. So, um, all right, I came up any? with Love Shack by the B-52s. Nice. I, for the longest time, I don't know where I was with, with Erica. We It must have came on in the car or something, and I was singing it, and there's the line about Tin Roof rusted. Yeah. Well. For my entire life, I thought it was tin roof rustless. And she looked what? at me and she goes, how can a tin roof be rustless? It's a tin roof. And I said, I don't know. And she goes, it's rusted, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad she set you straight. She did. This was probably too. like maybe a year or two into us dating. And I'm like, all right, so that's how it's going to be going forward. Okay, good to know. Um, <laughs> Hollaback Girl by Gwen Stefani. I love that song. That is That was like my senior year of high school. Uh, 99 Luft Balloons by Nina. Um, okay. Great 80s song. I don't know. I think I like the Gold English version. Goldfinger's better. Uh, maybe. You don't like the Goldfinger I'd version? have to listen to it again. I remember it being good, but I think I like the English version. The German version's good, but I think I like the English version more just because, I don't know. And then this was another one, a pop song. I don't know if anyone's actually going to know this song, but it's Dion Ferris. It's I Know What You're Doing. You probably haven't heard that song. Um, that was like I'm a sure '90s. I've heard it, but yeah, it just got a good. It's got a good beat to it. Um, okay, pretty good. So yeah, there's my honorable mentions. We did have a few people write in. Uh, we did. You want me to go first? Or you want to go first? Sure, you can go first. All right, our buddy Chris, uh, who was on, we've had on the podcast. Uh, he worked, used to work at uh, Guaranteed Rate right Field. And I think he might come on later this off season to get us ready for the White Sox. Now he had a lot of good songs, but some of these I got to admit, if I would have, cons- I didn't know if they were considered pop or not, but I could definitely see them on the Billboard list for pop. So yep. here we go: Tom Petty, "Free Fallen." That is definitely my my favorite Tom Petty song. Uh, Stevie B, "I Want to Be the One." I don't know who Stevie B is. Do you know who Stevie B is? No. Okay. "Lonely Island" featuring Michael Bolton, Jack Sparrow, great song. Uh, Real McCoy, Another Night. That's a great, that's a great mm-hmm. song. Maximilian, Fat Boy. I do not know that song. Nope. Uh, Big Mountain Baby, I Love Your Way. Oh, that is an, I, I didn't even think about that one. That's, that's another one. one that I have on my iPod. I listen to all the time. Hootie and the Blowfish, Hold My Hand. Great song. One of my first CDs as well. Joan Osborne, One of Us. That's a good song too. Uh, mm-hmm. Hey Jealousy by the Gin Blossoms. Great pig. Breakfast at Tiffany's by Deep Blue Something. That's a great one. 
When I Come Around by Green Day? I don't know. I guess that's one of their more poppier songs. But I don't know if yeah. I can I guess we could consider that I, pop. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It's, <laughs> it's sure tough. It made the pop, pop It list, did. So. And I think really that's all that matters. Uh, She's So High by Tal Bachman. Great song. Save yep. Tonight, Eagle Eye Cherry. Excellent. That is probably one of my top five favorite songs of all time. Uh, and he said, I have to stop myself or you're going to need another episode just for my list. So, Chris, thank you for writing in. We appreciate it. Yep. Good. Good. Yeah. Good list. Yeah. It's it's tough to say which. Which is what. Right. And we're not we're not the end all be I'm, all. I'm not going to no. who anybody's no. list this week because, no. yeah, it's go Sure. We'll put it on as we'll a, put it on a, there. A yeah. Pop song. Yes. Uh, Brian writes in on Facebook. Is this uh, Waters? Yes. OK. Brian writes in just a few. Uh, Alicia Keys, Girl on Fire. Okay, good one. Taylor Swift. Oh, Brian. No, Blink. Oh, get out of here with the uh, Taylor Swift You know crap. what? That new Taylor Swift song, though, I think it's called It's Me. That song is really good. Stop. It's. I, I heard we it on the- We have no Taylor Swift appreciation on this podcast. Why? Why are you- si- You're not a Swifty? I'm not a Swifty by any no. means, but- um, I'm, I'm so sick and tired of Taylor Swift. Yeah. I just I don't get it. She no, I, I I mean there's a couple. I think there's two songs by her I like, and that's about it. So. It's like Old Town Road, and then like Taylor Swift. Wow, that there's a level of Taylor Swift <laughs> hatred here. I didn't know you had. All right, continue. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> right, space or shake uh, or. Oh, blank space or shake it off. Oh, or shake okay. it off. Okay. Um, Sarah Bareilles. Uh, love song. That's a good song. Love song. I'm trying to think of that one. I'm sure I know I'm it. Not gonna write Jason you a love Mraz, song. The remedy. That's a good and song. I, I'm sure I yes. heard the song. I don't know. Yes. The, it's, it's bad. I don't know the ti- Like I don't know the song to mm-hmm. the titles. Um, yeah. TLC No Scrubs. Good song. good song. Although I like Waterfalls. I think that's their better. I song. like. Um, oh, I, never mind. I can't think of the name. Forget it. Keep going. Okay. Um, <laughs> Alan- Alanis Morissette, I think. Uh, you ought to know. And oh, a couple more here. The Beatles, Let It Be, Michael Jackson's Beat It, uh, <laughs> parody of Eat It, if you know, you know. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Erica writes in Backstreet's Back, TikTok by Kesha, Just Dance by Lady Gaga, Wannabe by Spice Girls, The Way You Make Me Feel by Michael Jackson. I did not know she liked that. Uh, hey baby by no doubt i love you like a love song selena gomez get this party started by pink just to name a few thank you erica yeah. it's a good list yeah karen writes in well this is going to take a while but <laughs> let me try to listen <laughs> yeah it, yeah we probably could have done the top 51 if we really oh, wanted to uh this, that would be fun. this is gonna take a while but let me try to list some songs back when music was good <laughs> Redbone, come and get your love Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. Oh, what a night! Oh, I hate that song. Good song. That song is very like I feel like advanced for the sixties like, time period that yes. came out. Yeah, I just it definitely would. If you would listen to that song without knowing who it was, like for the first time, you would think that song came out in like the eighties, right? Yeah, it does have an eighties vibe to it for sure. Yeah uh fleetwood mac tusk but really anything they've done the b-52's love shack prince purple rain really everything he's done uh michael jackson's uh pyt i don't know what that is hold on i don't know either again anything he's Pro- done. oh pretty young so, thing i don't think i've ever heard that I song i don't think i know that one um in excess uh devil's inside oh i love in excess Lauper, great girls band. just want to have fun Van Halen, Running with the Devil. Again, everything is fair game for Van Halen. Good list. Panama is my favorite Van Halen song. Yeah. Um. All right. My mom, Robin, wrote in. She said, Pleasant Valley Sunday by the Monkees. 25 or 6 to 4 by Chicago. Great song. I, I have mm-hmm. an appreciation for them. Uh, Love Shack by the 52s. You Really Got Me by the Kinks. Good song. Another Girl by the Beatles. American Woman by the Guess Who. Good song. I, although I like the Lenny Kravitz version a little bit more. Make Me Smile by Chicago and Just You and Me by Chicago. So nice. there you go. Good list. Yeah. Big Chicago fan. Yes. She she told me, I did not know this. Did you know they used to be originally called the Chicago Transit Chicago Authority? Transit Authority, yep. I did not know that. Learn something new every day, See? Justin. Guy, I'm the, the guy with the Chicago flag behind him, and I didn't know that that's yep. what they used to be called. Anyway, I digress. Go ahead. Marie from Main Event Marks, uh, Ghost by, I don't know. How I am it. Tom McDonald, I believe. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, I wasn't going to try to 
figure that one out. I'm glad you did. Um, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Is out and it's a pop love song about his girlfriend uh, at Nova Rockefeller. Did there you listen go. to this one? No, I did I not. not. Did you? To it I yet. have not yet. No. Um, and they, uh, she said, they all. I'm guessing everybody at main event marks. Uh, yes. We all love NSYNC. N- oh God, NSYNC, NSYNC, uh, and Backstreet Boys. I'm really struggling tonight. Uh, classics. But here's to uh, to here's to new music. Oh, I okay. I didn't. Yeah, I think the, I think is it's that an emoji. emoji in there? Yeah, it is. I, I yeah, think, I yeah. can't see that. Thanks, Justin. Oh, that's all right. Hey, I got you, Vinny. That's all right. <laughs> These, these glasses are just blue light glasses. So, right. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. I, you know, and sync, I still remember, uh, my family's friends came over and, uh, their daughter was my age and she would bring her CDs over and like, we would n- listen to new music. Like I was probably like nine, 10, 11 when we were really getting into music and she brought, it was like the original and sync album and her mom worked for a record company. She did like accountant work for them. She's like, yeah, we got these in, you know, they're this next big thing. They're supposed to be really big and no one had heard of them yet. And I was listening to it. I'm like, oh, this is okay. This isn't my type of music, you know? And then I swear to God, the very next day I turned on like MTV and there's NSYNC and I'm like, son of a bitch. She was right. These guys are going to yep. be huge. And then they took over the world. So, um, all right. Your dad, the final comments, your dad wrote in and said his hey, number. Hey, everybody. An old man's talking. Viva La Vida by Coldplay. Very, I didn't know your dad was a Coldplay fan. I love Coldplay. And he just likes that song. Oh, all right. I take that back then. Uh, Viva La Vida, good song. 25 or 6 to 4, Chicago, good song. Number three, Come Fly With Me by Frank Sinatra. Number two, We Only Just Begun by The Carpenters. Wow. Gross. I'm not a fan of The Carpenters. Uh, I, and that, your that, song. How can you be a fan of that song? I don't. I just think of Happy Gilmore when they're singing. The, <laughs> you, we you're just trying just to be begun. nice, Justin. I'm just trying to be nice, yes. And then he had Is some honor. Happy Gilmore? Yeah. Is that. Where it's like, we've no. only just begun to live. Oh, isn't that, is that, um, I could have swore that. What that's scene not, are you thinking of? I'm thinking of like when he's, I don't know My what Endless I'm thinking. Love is when they're doing the they're, No, skating. this is like when they're on the golf course. I want to say it's when he like gets hit by the car, maybe. And he gets back up and he's like, well, I'm ready to go. Or, or I learned how to putt. I don't know. I could be wrong. And then I feel like it transitions to like a rock song very quickly. Maybe it's a cover. Um, all right. He also has honorable mentions. <laughs> Make Me Smile by Chicago. Just the Way You Look Tonight by Frank Sinatra. Like to Get to Know You by Spanky and Our Gang. I've never heard of them. Have you? I, I'm sure I've heard the song. I just didn't realize who it was by. Tim and a t- t- Tim in a Bottle. <laughs> We're struggling here. Time Time in a this Bottle by going great. Time in a Bottle by Jim Crochet. Yeah. Jim, okay and say a little prayer for you dion warwick so there you go we've made it to the end T- tim and all yeah <laughs> um i i don't know Vinny. you got anything else before we wrap up i don't but this was ridiculous trying it to was all the pop songs oh my god every year so yeah, you yeah. know what? We're gonna, Vinny. You are in charge. You can text me when you've got the next episode. I I'm gonna take a hiatus from picking topics. I think. Well, I did send you one. I know, you and just, then when you said about you just, oh, you just pivoted. Dude. You're like, no, well, no. I was like, that's fine. I said, well, here's the only ones I thought, and you're like, okay, that's that. Sure, that works. I'm like, oh, I guess he wants to do that one. So that's <laughs> well, why. I'm like, I, I don't gave know. You one, and then you're like, what should we do this week? I gave you one, then you <laughs> sent me a list. I'm like, well, I guess he doesn't want to. No, do I was one fine I with that one. We can do that one next week if you want. That's fine All with right. me. Well, I guess should we just announce it now? Yeah. So next week, uh, I will see. There's got to be a website that has a list of all of them. But uh, if you're a baseball fan, you know that closers have their walkout music when they come out to have a save opportunity. So we are going to try and rank the best music that closers run out onto the field and run to the the mound, I guess. So um, check our Twitter. I will try and find. There's got to be someone online that has kept track of all the different walkout songs. I know like Trevor Hoffman, I want to say, like had maybe For Whom the Bell Tolls when he was a Padre. I could be wrong, but um, we'll find out. And I mean, I I couldn't even tell you. I don't even know what... um, Shit, who was the Cubs closer last year? I don't even know off the top of my head. Can't even think of it now. I know, that's how bad they were. But like Liam Hendricks, I don't know what Liam Hendricks is on the White Sox. But I'm sure he's got one. Campbell came out to Sweet Child of Mine. Oh, that that's a that's a good one. That's a good one. No, it's not. You don't think so? He was just a strange dude. 
No? It's an overrated Guns N' Roses song. Uh, best Guns N' Roses all think, song. All I think of when I hear that song is I think of uh, Step Brothers where they're singing oh, in the car. Yeah. It's such an awkward scene. I'm telling you, knocking on he- Heaven's Door, I have like, I love that song. I never really got into Guns N' Roses until like the last okay. couple of years, but great song. Um, So yeah, I, I don't know. I, so that is the plan. Look up. We'll we'll try and send out a link of different ones, and you can tell us which closer had the best walkout. What get you really pumped up? If you're a Cubs fan, the closer usually come, would come out and blow it, especially if you were Carlos Marmol near the tail end of his hey, career. Hey, we will n- have no slandering of Car- Carlos Marmol. Really? On this podcast. I, I did not know yes. that you were a you were that big of a Carlos yes. Marmol fan. Hey, he was one of the best closers or one he of was. the best relief pitchers for the Cubs for the longest. He time. was. That's true. So. Um, all right. Well, on that note, we are going to wrap up. Again, you can find us in a variety of ways. YouTube.com slash baseball, whatever. Twitch.tv slash baseball, whatever. Facebook.com slash baseball, whatever. Tweet us at baseball and what. We are at almost 1,000. Hopefully, we can get to 1,000 followers before Elon wrecks Twitter. I don't know. Um, email us at baseball, whatever, at gmail.com. We are on all your podcast apps of choice. Leave us a five-star review on Apple or Spotify. We are up to 20 reviews from Apple. I believe Ruby something left us a review saying that we have very knowledgeable conversations. So thank you, Ruby. I, I, you're muted, Vinny. I can't hear you. Hold on. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I don't know. All right. doesn't matter. Um, on that note, thank you again. We will be back next week on baseball and whatever. See you later, everybody. Have a good night.